because I'm not going to do whatever I want to do. Hey! hey. <laughs> All right, it is Queens with Herpes once again. Thank you for back. Blanket Chronicles. <laughs> so with that being said, guys, I'm happy to be back. If you have not watched our last videos on herpes, celibacy, dating, single, and dating, you're missing out. These videos are really good. Um, we're speaking from a Christian perspective um, of living with herpes, number one, but also being celibate, single, dating, trying to do this thing the way that God wants us to do it and telling the reality in it. This thing is really difficult. We are really being crucified, especially the women and men who are standing up and talking about it of different ways to go about dating. They're making it... it they get crucified for it. And I feel so bad. Truth be told, I feel bad when um, <laughs> we see our brothers and sisters in Christ trying to share. I can't wipe it off. Um, share that. Um, share the way to do this. And then people are like, nah, that's not how you should do it. You should just don't do anything. Um, um, but it, it's time to talk about it, especially for our generation. We're really, we, we need to talk. We need to talk. Friend, honestly, I'm proud of our generation. Um, People don't realize how much of us, how many of us are actually living this thing out. And oh, doing yeah. It. There are so, I didn't know how people were actually living, like, at our age. Like, I'm 25. I'm 28. And I people my age and younger in our generation who are, like, living out loud for Christ and uh -uh. Um, <clears throat> being celibate, you know, really doing dating relationships of God's way. Mm -hmm. And... Who are doing it and like not ashamed. And I didn't realize how many people were doing it until I got into it and started looking for it. it. And then I was like, oh, stop. And why were you looking for it? Why was I looking for it? Because I had decided to do it. So you were looking for accountability. I was looking. It wasn't even accountability I was mm -hmm. looking for. At that moment. At the moment, I just wanted to feel like I wasn't by myself. Same thing for herpes. We don't want to feel alone. Yeah. So it was, I was looking for support. Yeah. It was. I was looking for account. I didn't really want the accountability part of it because then I felt like people come to try to tell me what to do, yeah. and I think that's an issue that we all have, um, just in general in life. People don't want accountability because they don't want nobody telling them what they shouldn't be doing mm -hmm. and what they should be doing. You need it, though. Um, but it's necessary. And but you gotta so, be careful. You have to be careful. Picking your accountability is very vital um, to your success because. If you're choosing people who are a judgmental, or just because they're your friend, just because you're just because somebody is your friend does not make them a good accountability partner. Mm -hmm. For every example, I've got some friends who do not agree with celibacy. Um, who thought I was buku crazy mm -hmm. when I decided to do it, and they had I wasn't doing it. Everything negative in the world. To <laughs> I, say, well, I was married, <laughs> and <laughs> um, weren't supportive of it, and trying to have a conversation with them about my struggles with celibacy. We're like, oh, boo-hoo, life is so hard, you're not having sex. Yes, life is very difficult not having sex. Life is actually kind of harder than yours right now. You're, at least you're getting some, you're relieving your stress. Like, <laughs> that is not the kind of accountability partner that you want. You yeah, want you somebody. can't, that's not an accountability partner. That's person that's going to set you that's up. That's going to set you and up And y'all not equally yoked. That's not, I'm about to say, honestly, um, celibacy, and a lot of people don't tell you this, is going to win some people out of your life. Oh, quick. Quick. Um, for it, <coughs> and it's necessary because if you can't, and I had and some friends I weeded out and they came back after they found respect for it, um, and then people are just gone. Mm -hmm. But I had to get to a place where if you couldn't respect what I'm trying to do, then you, this isn't a good fit for me. Mm -hmm. Relationships are supposed to take you somewhere. It's a ship. It's a destination. Um, so whether it be you know a dating relationship is a it's a ship to marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, your friendships should take you to your goals. Mm -hmm. Whatever. You know, even <clears throat> family, anything like that. And if you're not doing that, then what are you here for? So for me, I had to get some, uh, rid of some friendships. Um, and be very choosy about who I let to be my accountability partner. Even people who are celibate, I still have to be careful with. Oh, man. They'll um, set you up, too. Because everybody has their way of doing things. And some people, it's like, if you don't do it my way, you're doing it wrong. Mm. And they don't, they will actually, especially people who are um, over, I guess, I guess people like to call it overly religious. Or people who won't do it longer than you. Sometimes they, they think they have been doing they it for a long their time. They think their way is right. Um, and it may not necessarily be intentional. Um, sometimes people just get to a place where they've done something for so long that they forget. Sometimes 
He gets self righteous. You too. get self righteous too, and you start feeling like you're better mm-hmm. because you're doing it. You forget that you was here too, mm-hmm. um, and that's one place I never want to be. Um, but you gotta be someone who's willing to always address their sales and also stay themselves. transparent. Mm-hmm. And I think the thing about it is, even though I was married, I still <laughs> watched Crystal the whole time. And when I ended up getting out of my marriage, I was like, no, I want to do the celibacy thing. But I watched her, and I feel like if she's gonna fall, we and her in the same situation, we dealt with the same things. Yes, yeah, she went a different path from mine, but we still had the same mindset. If she can hold, <laughs> I can hold. And I feel like sometimes you got to watch your accountability partner. Are they accountable for their sales? Because if you're not accountable for yourself, how are you going to watch me? And I'm starting the game. I'm just beginning. You know I'm going to bust my head. And the question is, is that person willing to even check you? Is your accountability willing to check you? And do they do it with love? Yeah. And not judgment. Um, Yeah, I have that problem with Crystal. Like, I haven't had so many bad tears with accountability partners. But when you're especially in something like this, you don't, if you, you know, in the event that you fall or even are like, hey, I'm struggling in this area with anything, you don't want somebody to be like, well, you shouldn't have did this mm-hmm. and you shouldn't be thinking like that and oh my gosh, I can't believe you, you know, that doesn't help. It makes it worse. Crystal was helping. Crystal was sitting here and dressed me. <laughs> and then they didn't. <laughs> she helped me go on a date. I already right. knew like, what, what, do you, what do you got on? I she said, like, okay, look, you no, gonna wear no. something but not wear that. <laughs> or, or, not even that, but a good accountability partner is somebody who doesn't try to force you into doing things. Uh, because one of the things, like, especially for example, me and you, when, before you decided to be celibate, even after you decided to be celibate, it wasn't a you have to do it type of thing. I'm like, dude, you're grown. She never brought it up. God. That <laughs> what, The thing about it is what I love is she said, you're accountable for yourself. You're you grown. made a decision. You know what you shouldn't be doing. I'm not about to remind you what you shouldn't be doing. But I am going to be your friend and be like, I'm gonna let she'll give me the eye like, <laughs> Okay. Like, perfect example, she was getting ready for a date, and she came out, and I was like, Aaliyah Tarn, you're going to wear a whole bodysuit for real? <laughs> so then I asked, so then I started asking her questions. Like, I'm not going to tell you what's going She's like, so what are your plans? Like, what are you going to do? Like, what, what are your intentions for tonight? She was like, I'm changing. <laughs> like, I just wanted to know. I didn't mean anything by it. And she did, but I knew what she was saying. If my whole thing is, it's all are about. Are you setting yourself up? Are you? Most of us do. When we go out the house as women and we're going on a date and you know you want to do something, you make sure you take the longest bath. You shave your legs. <laughs> you, you shave, shave your legs. girl. You make sure you got the best underwear and bra on. The best perfume you can buy. Right. And you, you put... The, you mix your oil with your lotion. You do all kind of crazy stuff you that you take, don't do on a regular day. You take a little bag <clears throat> with you to prepare. Okay? You better, Let me go freshen up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Let me get that for 30 minutes. I just came out. I was like, "Those purse look heavy." <laughs> you know, people be stuck in extra panties, and stuff extra like panties, sleeping clothes, stuff like that. So my whole thing is, ladies, stop acting like we don't be intentional. We are very We're intentional. Planners. Being. We are planners. We plan things out. My whole thing is the same thing that you plan to do it. You got to plan <laughs> not to do it. And you got to put yourself in a situation and have somebody who's going to tell you, I got your back. And whatever you do, just know I love you and I'm going to help you with it anyway. Because I came home. She called me in the morning like, all right, okay, are you coming home? And literally, we were about to do it again. I was like, I got to go. I got it. Go, go, go. <laughs> she was babysitting. So she's like, I got to go. He was I didn't like, even have nowhere to go. She was like, I got to be somewhere at eight. I knew she didn't have to be nowhere, but I needed to go. <laughs> but I knew her. I knew she needed to leave. I was like, I don't know what she's doing. But- he was so angry holy spirit it was like he was angry even like when you went out and you weren't doing anything holy spirit was like check text her oh i was on my way home anyway i was like it's getting late He's like i know i was about to call you on my way home i was on my way home but i was being he was trying me because he came out literally this is what's like something's situation. happening because he he tried to set me up okay so at this time he had on he had a basketball shorts but i didn't trip about that by the end i was a little bit stronger okay i was stronger but he's an athlete Hmm. But that being said, he plays football. So with that being said, I was just like, okay. We, he was sitting on one side of the couch. I was sitting on one. We were sitting each other. I did the whole glaze, like. And he looked at me. I looked at him. I was like, uh uh-uh. uh. So I turned my head. Whatever. He went to go take a shower. I didn't trip about that. I said that's anyway. I said I told him. I said you need to take a shower. Like you like play football all day. Um, and we had been together since football. Like before the football game, during the football game, we ate dinner. You didn't have time. Go. Thank God he didn't stink. It was kind of crazy. I was like, oh, wow. Okay. But it is. <laughs> like, and he played. Okay. He's a player. So, um, he went to the bathroom, did whatever he did. He came out. I swear to God, 
first it was like a seep under the door cologne. Right. <laughs> I swear it was like a snake. It was it like I'm coming for the and door. it bit me. I was like, whoa, what is that? And I said it out loud, not meaning to say it out loud, but I was like, what do you have on? What? He was like, I know I smell good. Don't I said, boy, get away from me. Stop it. Go wash it off. I said, what is your problem? And he came and literally, I want to show y'all what he did. He did this. Over. I said, no. Absolutely <laughs> <laughs> not. You're not going to get me today. You're not going to get me today. And I literally, I had put my hand and I almost put my foot in his chest. I said, what you get off of me? We're not doing this. I can't do this. And literally, he he was like, okay, she is really serious she about this. Like the and my whole thing, I'm pretty good with we can hang out and things like that. It's just a boundary. Then he sat next to me, and as close as me and Crystal sitting, his leg was touching my. I said, can you please move? I said, you are absolutely too close. And he was like, she tripping. Yeah. Like he and I can tell because now he changed the TV and we watch it because he loves sports, so he watching football, basketball, and he was like, Well, let me watch something I know you may want to watch. We watched another darn movie and it dealt with a football player, but I was like, You can't get away with extra passion. So we're watching the movie, he get on his side and he had a blanket. I said, Oh no, I got my own. Y'all don't share blankets to set up. Don't share blankets, please. It's always to set up. Okay, and I'm on one side, so he's still on one side of the couch. I am. He put his feet. I said, No more footsies, don't have your feet touch mine. Okay. <laughs> Keep your feet up. He's like, this girl is tripping. No, I'm not tripping. No. I know my boundaries. Y'all, I ain't even gonna lie. Like, <laughs> especially at people's houses, if you know how people have a couch on a little seat, I, I grab that little seat so quick. He was on I, the little seat, but he came over the time. He was trying to set. He was trying to set, set me up. up. Mm-hmm. But I was in the corner so tight, <laughs> and you couldn't get to. Me. And then he did the whole. Oh, I'm getting so sleepy. Good night. I said, okay. I kept watching the movie because I had never seen the movie. So I was just watching, watching. I said, well, I look like you're getting tired. I'm about to get ready to go. Yeah, I'm getting a little sleep. I said, well, okay. Well, I, I said, let me, let me come and walk me out. Yeah, that was set up. He, soon as I got home with Crystal, I got a text. Belize. I mean, just my name. I said, oh, this is serious. I got a long message, y'all. This long. Saying, you know, I I know you really like me. I really like you, but I can't do this. Like, I'm not ready for this. You know, I feel like being around you is just not the best thing right now. I'm not in a good place. Like, literally, he cut me off. Like, I because he realized you were serious, and he it. realized, okay, she's serious. Like, she's not gonna be on this. For but real. you know what? I would rather have that. It hurt, but it was, it was so necessary. Um, I think we really gotta get to a place that, especially people who are celebrating, thinking about it. Um, and not taking it as rejection, y'all. I did. It's a I did, blessing. y'all. That was my first time. And I used to say it that. like that. Uh, but when somebody doesn't want to deal with it because they're told it, that's one of the biggest blessings I can give you. Because it's just saving you a whole bunch of trouble. Like, for you to be like, you know what? I'm not really cool with this. <laughs> and, you know, I would just rather not bring you into my foolishness and tell you and he did say that and it hurt though I'm I'm not gonna do you know you don't wanna have sex that's great but just cause I'm not having sex with you like I had I had guys tell me like yeah that's cool I respect you I'm not gonna have to try to sex with you but I'm not okay with not having sex like I'm gonna have sex with somebody (laughs) and I'm like well I'm not okay with that like this is like okay are we a relationship you think that type of relationship we're gonna be in (laughs) like I mean I don't know what kind of girls you're used to dealing with but I just I don't get down like that like you can't just be like okay well since we can't have sex, I'm going to just go have sex with somebody else. Like, there's no surrogate sex partners. We're not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> this is all or nothing. So, for, for me, I had to put it in the perspective of, if somebody wants to be with me, they have to be... Being with me means being something. If you're not ready to either already be in that lifestyle or make that conversion to that lifestyle, we have nothing to talk about. No. He still don't talk to me this to this <laughs> day, y'all. It's so funny because at the end of the day... I still care about him dearly, y'all, just in that short period of time. Oh, we learned love people from a distance. Um, yeah, and I learned that I had to do the uh, block delete. He ain't deleted, but he's blocked. <laughs> All right, All right, yeah, he's he go to church with us, so I can't block him. Plus, at the end of the day, I'm still responsible for him, which I kept saying I'm not responsible, but I we, am. You were responsible for so many We people. are responsible because he is my brother in Christ, so I'm still responsible for covering him. I'm still responsible for making sure if he don't come to church that I need to find out what's going on with him. And then I'm still his accountability part spite of, and I still know things that's going on with him that many people don't know. So I still have a little bit more weight on me because I was I was safe place. You know, but I've been able, what I do, and I tell a lot of women, you know, you put in a situation where a person is not, especially if y'all in church, yeah, this is something to talk. If you're talking to somebody at church, y'all don't 
end up talking to each other because y'all don't agree upon what y'all supposed to believe in. Let's really be honest. Y'all don't agree upon. Pass him on to another brother. Let your brother, and thank God we have a brother, and we told we our brother. an awesome brother. Yeah, and um, my brother is close with him, and I told my brother what was going on, and my brother taking care of him, making sure he's fine, and making sure I tell him. He tell me, like, oh, he's doing good, and I'm like, I still want to check up. Check I want to know yeah. what's going on with him, but my brother, I was like. He's a middleman. He needs to go to a man and deal with those things, and my brother's still like, no. You know, type thing. But at the end of the day, I had to give him to somebody who he needed to be with. I'm a distraction to a certain extent because at the end of the day, I am great. Okay. And he, he acknowledged that, like, Dawn, you are a really good woman and I need to get my ish together. You know, but at the end of the day, that's hard when you know you're still dibbling and dabbling and still working on some things and you have temptation standing in your face. It's hard to, to move forward. It's like, I cannot work on myself with you there. And that's the same for us. Some of us cannot work on ourselves with a man in our face. It's just not at the time. Yeah, I'm about to say, um, your single season, my oh, word, it took me a long time. She sees the struggle of me getting to this place. <laughs> Understanding that your single season is designed for so many reasons. Like, mm-hmm. I, and especially as women, I feel like we've been taught, we've been raised that being single is a curse. Yeah, you're it's supposed to be married. Horrible. You're supposed to be married. You're supposed to have a man. Just have, somebody should want you. And, and, if you're not with somebody, that means the mother wants you. <laughs> that's a lie. And that's a lie from the pit straight from hell. Every, some, somebody always wants you. Oh, yeah. They just know um, they can't come up here with can, nonsense. Right. So, we've been taught that, you know, there's something wrong with us if we're not in a relationship. And that's why, that's why we chase these relationships. It's not even our job, first of all. Um, but, we're not the secrets. Uh, your single season, I'm learning that it's designed for you to walk in your purpose. And, like, this is... This is our purpose right here. Mm-hmm. This, what we're doing is... Perfect. I did it in my marriage, but I was and single in my marriage, y'all. You're still single, single while you're married. Right. Okay. And if that is not addressed while you're single... Oh, first of all, okay, so boys always tell me that marriage exposes your singleness. So, me being never being married... I learned that from Michael Todd. Please what? watch Michael Todd. He's great. He's very transparent. We're going to meet him one day. I can't wait Michael, to meet him. if you see us right we now. We love you, Michael. Hi. Um, You're making an impact on so many lives right now. Thank you. Um, Thank you. We really do. Thank you. Yeah. And um, it's designed for you to walk in your purpose because God has so much stuff. Like, my God, it took a while. People had explained to me, like, God's purpose for my life was not for me to marry somebody. Yes. That may be incorporated. Yeah, but it's stuff you gotta it. do before you. But get he did not send me to this earth to get married. Just like that was like at the very, very bottom of the list of things for me to do, and that goes with children too. And I'm not saying they're longer children and they're not part of your purpose. Absolutely, they are. You wouldn't have them if they weren't. Um, but that's at the bottom of the totem pole of what he had me here for. He put me here to do something. And until that is done, it's like mission is not accomplished. And I'll tell y'all also, when a person comes into your life, they're supposed to help you in the next level of where you're going in your purpose. Right. And when, if they're not helping you in your next level, they're purposeless. Right. And that's what, that's what I was saying about relationships. Mm-hmm. It's a ship. It should be going to a destination. Yeah. And most people's ships are sinking. They're sinking. Or they stand, they're anchored down with mess. Right, and they're not moving. They're just sitting there. They're just sitting there. And you wonder why, okay, I'm not growing. I'm not doing these things. I can tell y'all that in my marriage, whatever, we were moving in the beginning. Like, things was like, he supported me in this and all that stuff. And then I start, my, I jumped off the boat. I said, I'm a swimmer. I can swim. Okay? I jumped off. I was like, I, I, this boat ain't going nowhere. It is anchored to the to the bottom of the ocean. Anchored. It may not be. It might be the Titanic. It might not have just been built right. It wasn't built right. It hit something. It hit something. But, it was, <laughs> but because, no. But it's because built. it wasn't built correctly, it hitting something damages it to the point where it sunk. Oh, yeah. Truth be told. And, my mom and so that's where your foundation off. with people comes in. Mm-hmm. And that's where um, those boundaries are important. And that communication is important when you're talking to people, whether it be in a relationship or otherwise. Because if there's no foundation there and there's no purpose in it, then as soon as something like okay, realistically, like I always say, if those of you who watch my videos about me dating, if a guy can't handle me with herpes, then baby, we really have nothing to talk about because if you can't handle something this small, and I know people don't think of it as something small and minute, but 
how could you? Your narcolepsy is ten times worse than. I'm gonna say my narcolepsy. I deal with it all life. the time. I'm like, take your medicine. So take your medicine. I was on my face today. She be getting on my nerves. I'm not gonna lie. She's <laughs> not gonna cut that much. Like my narcolepsy is <laughs> my life ten times. So if you can't handle the fact that I have herpes, then you can't handle nothing. my narcolepsy. And if you can't handle narcolepsy, then God forbid you a uh, a uh, a life changing event happens to us yeah. during a relationship. Things like things happen to people all the time. Car people accidents are killers. Get into right car now. accidents and they lose their lives or they lose mm-hmm. limbs. And then they can um, never go back to work. They become paralyzed. Mm-hmm. People um, acquire different disorders or diseases. So yeah, over years. People, um, you know, whether it be cancer or dementia. Not even that. Or you know the family member. You know the family member. It takes a phone. It it a parent. Out. Or a job. Yep. And so if you can't handle me having herpes, how you going to handle it one day I say, baby, I got fired today. Yeah, and you was making a bulk of the money. And I was making more money than them. <laughs> like, you can't handle that life event. Or, hey, we got an out of control child. Oh, my God. We have a teenager running rampant right now. They ain't listening to me. They ain't listening to you. Whoopings don't work. Timeouts don't work. Taking away the iPad don't work. They run away from home. <laughs> running away from home. Oh, out here doing all kinds of stuff. If you can't handle me saying, hey, I have herpes, or hey, I'm celibate, then how you going to deal with that? Because that's a team effort. That's, that's not something you cannot, you cannot deal with. with. Um, loss of family, loss of jobs, loss, those things are team effort. Even when you're dealing with it single, you have somebody with you in the midst of that. That is something you cannot deal with <laughs> or on even, your own. Or um, even simple stuff. How are you going to deal with um, temptation? You can't deal with me having herpes. How are you going to deal with temptation if somebody tries to sleep with you or comes against our marriage or, or gossips? Oh, yeah. Speaks ill will <laughs> against us in our relationship. Or um, people deal with... An, an, rebuke every thought of that right now but um mother-in-law issues mm-hmm. and family drama and family secrets oh my god stuff you start learning after you get into the marriage there are things that you and that's oh, back to michael todd who said there are things that you don't learn you don't love people until you really get married you know things that love requires love is unconditional it's and real it, deal unconditional. and it requires number one is patience it's the first word that comes to pass and i don't know about y'all but i have learned recently that i'm more like a conditional lover like i used to be like i'm an unconditional lover that's jesus Lies. jesus is the real unconditional lover because it's just some stuff you can't do to me you don't don't absolutely not <laughs> absolutely and not. me still be like oh i love you mm. no i do love I love you, you with love christ but that's it it's but it's no i'm safe. walking because you're not gonna damage me in the process yeah you know so guys it's just it's very vital that we take this singleness <laughs> seriously as women we have to we have to feel you shouldn't feel and it's something me and her been dealing with the lonely oh i want someone why um <laughs> one of the things we recently learned is how to address your loneliness and figure out why you're lonely why do you feel lonely? What's mm-hmm. the root of it? Mm-hmm. And I ain't talking about, oh, <clears throat> just because. No, I mean, it ain't it's, nothing it's, about it's nothing, that person. It's nothing to do with you being, like, why do you feel, what makes you feel lonely and why? Mm-hmm. Is it because you didn't get enough attention because you were when you were a kid? Or is it because you feel like nobody loves you unless they're touching you? Mm-hmm. Or, what is your love language? What is yeah? What is your love language? Do you know your love language? Because mm-hmm. some people, it's when you don't have any... Um, quality time or any physical touch, which I mean, those two things are vital mm-hmm. as human beings. Period. Anyway, um, we'll but if those right. are your main love language and you're not getting it, you're going to feel lonely Absolutely. off the rip. So like, what those mine, are yours. I'm about to say those, <laughs> those, are, those are, are my top two. So like, <laughs> even and that even goes with your friendships, guys. It doesn't just have to be dating. So like, belief as my friend knows, like my <laughs> love language is quality time, and I don't oh, care I cut her off. how <laughs> I get and she and it. It will make me crumble. Yeah, but it helped. It helped, but like, <laughs> but, you, but you did it in moderation. Yeah, because because you know that you're my friend, and because you know how I operate. Because God loves you. <laughs> you know that you couldn't completely cut me off without me spazzing out. No, God told me that because I was just I would crumble, and that's with any relationship you I'm got in. To, I think the thing is you gotta learn it. You have to learn it, and you have to also understand that person's love language. Like with me. Quality time is a big deal. I don't care if we talk on the phone or see each other face to face. Write me a letter, send me a card, shoot a freaking flare in the sky for all I care. <laughs> like I don't care if you shoot a firecracker that says I'm alive. <laughs> that is enough. She's quick. She'd be the main person calling people to my. Are you alive? 
Right. Like, Crystal, stop calling random. I need to know. I mean, talk calls in years and be like, are you alive? I'm like, you Crystal, they fine. Me, sign not me. calling people. That, oh, I had to learn. Just, if I ain't heard from you, if I'm not you gotta go. Yeah, but that's stuff you learn. But I just want us as women to just deal with <laughs> this singleness thing. Like, at the end of the day, it is not the end of the world. You be a single. Single is the best it's thing. Okay, y'all. It's the best thing you can have at this time. You don't have to worry about nobody but self. This is a time where you should be doing the, your best work for Christ. I mean, your best work. And, and if half of us, if you don't know what your purpose is, what you dating for? I mean, truth be told, the they part of come getting, with some purpose too. My whole thing is, if you don't know yours, right. how do you know his is compatible with yours? Well, ladies, realistically, um, in marriage, we're designed to be a helpmeet no. or what we call a helpmate. If you can't help him, if you can't help yourself, <laughs> you baby, ain't doing yourself. Doing you're no not justice. doing yourself any justice. So how are you gonna come in? A as women, we're very good at identifying people's purposes. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and help, that's why we're like, help we're helpers. Do it for ourselves, though. We like, we like to nurture and cultivate things. We make things grow. Quick. How? Quickly. Yes. <laughs> we, we throw some fertilizer on that thing. <laughs> and how can you do that if you can't do it for yourself? You I can't yourself. come over here and be like, hey, I, you, and you know, we're visionaries. We see, we see the big picture. And a lot of times we like, we like to date, um, Potential instead of purpose. We go talk about that all another day. But you can't help him with any potential. Period. If you don't even know what your own is, and then on top of that, even if you do know his, it's like your your purposes have to complement each other. Mm-hmm. So a relationship they don't have to be perfect. They got to be the same. Thing they have to be the same exact thing, but they have to make sense together. Like your marriage got to make sense. Like if I'm <laughs> right, like. <laughs> If you're a carpenter, me being a baker, no, it's fine. It's fine, but what What's else? What's our ministry is together. What else do I have? Yeah, like so. I'm trying to think of an example for that. It's not really. It, it doesn't really, matter it, what your profession is. It doesn't it's matter about what your profession. It's about your your. It's a point your, in the your middle. Purpose. There has to be something that. Brings, that relationship got There has to be some commonality that brings. The purpose <laughs> together. You could be a carpenter and I can be a baker. Your profession has but what are we doing for God? Yes, that's the most important part because most Pharisees get married and they fail to do the the, the God work. work. And they do purpose. the they do the the profession work. They make sure their house is taken care of and the kids are taken care of, but like. never do the God work. And then they wonder why their marriage is still stagnant or it's something that's not right. And they run like, what's not right? We're happy. We love each other. You know, sex is great. You know, communication is good. But we feel off. But God is like, I made this to glorify me. Yeah, and y'all not doing it. it. So, real deal, y'all, transparent moment. I didn't want to do this. I ain't gonna lie. We ain't want to do none of this, honestly. Realistically. When God said, hey, tell the world you have herpes. I was like, (laughs) Y'all know I don't did a video about that. I hate it. Yes. Yo, Dave. I'm about to say, you can go back and watch my videos. I was like, oh, you tried it. I will talk about anything you want to. I have, y'all know I have narcolepsy. I'm like, I will tell the whole hour world that I'm a sleepy girl. Like, <laughs> I'll write a song. I'll do. She can sing, y'all. <clears throat> I always put on play. She hates it. I hate she does say. <laughs> don't ask me to sing. I'm not doing it. Um, That's what real singers say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, it's not happening. <laughs> Don't ask. <laughs> um, but anyways, you don't throw my whole point out. I was like, I'll tell the whole world that I have narcolepsy. I'll talk about God. I will talk about whatever you want me to talk about. But what you ain't gonna do is tell me to tell the whole world I have herpes. Clearly, that, that was the point. Part. What that you always point. say you don't want to do is typically the main it's thing the you purpose. have to That's do. That's your purpose. That's what you need to do. Mm-hmm. If you sit there arguing with God about what you're supposed to be doing. That's it. That's it, right? And there. that's the thing that you're scared to do. And it can be do. something because so simple. Because realistically, celibacy, herpes didn't scare me as much. I was just like, I'm going to tell everybody. Yay. And then I realized how much it scared me after I started doing it. Yeah, we started doing it. Um, it scare you. But when it came to the celibacy, how long? How long have I been saying we were going to have these videos done? It's been a while. And there have been like full blown meltdown moments and tears. But that was preparing her to get here. And I feel like sometimes, and and we want to talk about that as well. If you know you need to share that, and you know you're supposed to be doing something, sharing something, ladies, if whatever's in your signal, if that's supposed to be telling something and you're scared to tell it, we're going to talk about that in our next video of how to get to that point of 
finally decided to, I'm just going to jump. If I bust my head while I'm going down, just know I got a parachute. Discovering and jumping into your purpose. Yeah. yeah we're going yeah, to gonna talk about that. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about in the next, because that goes hand in hand with single. Um, as we talked about all the things with dating, we don't told y'all about, you know, boundaries and, you know, making sure you're picking a good accountability. But now the this single, single thing is vital. What are you yeah. doing? Herpes. What are you going to do in this? Like, it's something to do. Herpes is not the end of the world. You're not going to die. Your life is still going. You're still going to go to work. Them bills keep coming. Them kids keep crying. That man keep bugging. Like, at the and end of the day. It's not the end of your life either. No. Like, okay, you didn't have sex today. Your bill is still due on the first. <laughs> what you going to do about it? Because right. I'm sorry, but getting off for 15 minutes is not going to pay your mortgage. Only if you're a prostitute. Unless you're a prostitute. Or a sugar baby. We'll talk about that in another day. Let's <laughs> be a sugar baby, y'all. <laughs> so, um, but realistically, it's not going to meet the needs. Unless you're in that container. If you're in Michael that container. Todd, unless you're in that container. Yeah, if you're in that it's container. It's not going to. Or profession. To, if, yeah, or in that profession. <laughs> um, it's not going to be the end all be Which all. Which most of y'all are not. So thank and um, I don't mean for those who, who are, we're going to talk. Yeah, it's time to talk about it's it. It's time to talk. So we're opening up the floodgates, y'all. It's coming. So the next video is going to be about... Uh, purpose. So, what's the question, Crystal? Crystal always get a good question. <clears throat> you didn't give me a chance. No. You should just talk something in my head. Okay, so my question about purpose too. Good. Um, first thing is, we are told them how it's important to find your purpose. Mm -hmm. How? Ooh, yeah. Vital. Did you find your purpose? Mm -hmm. And what did you do? To start walking in it. Okay, good questions, y'all. I can answer those with ease. Okay, so I love We're going to answer those when we come back. We're going to come back. So make sure you watch the last videos. If you got this video right in the middle, make sure you watch the whole video. I know these videos are like 30 minutes. It does not matter. Sure. They are vital. Sure. And you're going to hear something. And information. Okay, okay. I know we're um, like spitting a lot of information on y'all at one time. But, um, but there's a reason. And make sure you share it. Please share it with somebody. Like, click share. Um, who sure. needs these videos? Because at the end of the day, it's time to be transparent. It's time to be honest, <laughs> and it's time to hear from us. Like at the end of the day, um, y'all know I serve African American women. Um, it's time for us to hear from our for us. And with the celibate thing, it's also time for us to hear from um, those of us who are in the middle of it. I yeah. Think. Like for me, the biggest thing was, or biggest one of the biggest reasons for doing it is because. I found that when searching for things, being celibate, I couldn't find anybody who was actually in the middle of the process. No, because most everybody people are not. was like engaged or married, and like we used to be like this. And but you're not showing me. You're showing me the end result. On the I don't want picture. the end. I want the nitty gritty, dirty, grimy stuff that I'm going through right now. That I, makes me feel crazy. Yeah, and feel like you're not doing it. And right. feel like I'm not doing it right. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm here. That's why we're here. We love you guys. And we'll be back. We'll be back. Talk Bye. to you soon.